Welcome to the Damiano Dimension. Season, I'll say this is season two. We are uh, going to break this down a little bit into uh, how many parts your mini series. We're f- focused on a little bit of sports right now. Joined is my good friend Cameron Russell. Cameron, say what's up. What's up, everyone? <sighs> I like the Spurs jersey. Thank you. It's actually uh, custom. Got my name on the back and everything. Oh, I didn't I'm, even I'm, notice. I'm a diehard Spurs fan. <laughs> I, I got the hat and everything. See, man, I want to get a I want to get a basketball jersey. I'm either gonna get a Ben Simmons or a, <sighs> I want. I don't man. I just like the way he plays defense. Yeah, I mean, he's a good player. He's a good. I, like he I want, needs to work on his jumper though. Oh, for sure he does. <laughs> it's it's pretty ugly. I'm still like like I'm into basketball, but I'm not I'm not as far deep into basketball as you are, which is why I wanted to have you on this podcast. Like, obviously, I know that. Philly leads the Eastern Conference because I'm all Philly everything, but but the Eastern Conference is weak because when you look at the <laughs> look at the sixth seed, right? The the because uh, this season's different. The top six seeds are the ones that have actual playoff contention, like sealed at the end of the season. It's not the top eight like usual, and then the seventh through tenth seed have a play in. I, I just want to take a minute so. to to. To for everyone to know that as soon as Houston traded away James Harden, they are now second to last in the Western Conference. Yeah. Not not a great move on their part. But, well, it, I mean it's not their Brooklyn, fault. Like if Harden didn't want to play, then he wasn't going to play. There's not really any rules. That I know, but that's that's part of the problem with the NBA because you have that same situation with Kawhi Leonard where he threatened not to play for San Antonio. Yeah, exactly. And he was like, you "Trade me, and I want to go to uh, L.A. or I'm not going to play." And he played nine games that whole season. Yeah, and I also he don't. Was still getting paid millions of dollars. You and know? you guys have that soft cap too. I don't like the soft cap on, in the NBA. I'm scared that the NFL is going to end up doing it. Yeah. And Jerry Jones will reign supreme on the Cowboys. I mean, the the NBA does allow um, teams to break the salary cap, though. The Lakers have been breaking it for years. Because yeah, because they, they have the they soft cap. Af- yeah, and they can afford it. I don't think that the rest of the NBA does. I don't. I don't think they do. That's what I'm saying. Like, like the Lakers can break it, and yeah, if and if any other team, if, can, like if though, the NFL right? had a sa- what? I don't think anyone else can though. The like they can't afford it. Yeah. 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 Because L. A. or at least the Lakers, not the Clippers, but the Lakers have a um, their own television. Yeah. Well, so do the Cowboys. I'm saying so. Like if the NFL got a South really? cap, the Cowboys yeah. have their own Cowboys network. network. Yeah. They have, it's. it's oh, okay. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure. I'm not gonna watch it. Fan. Um. But we're focusing on basketball today. Uh, the, the real point of this podcast is just to, you know, every, not everyone loves sports, but sports does affect people differently. And it does, for a lot of people, change the course of their lives. Like for me, you know, I wasn't a big sports guy as a kid, but since I was pretty much a freshman in college, maybe a year before that is when I really started getting into sports. And now the only thing I'm doing is trying to pursue a profession in sports. So you know what I mean? And it dates back to when you were a kid for the most, for a lot of people. So for you, like, what was your favorite sports moment? Like in a, in a professional sense, like something I watched or something I did. It could be both, but because you've ref too, haven't you? I refed one game. I hated it. I was I was really? so bad. I, I'm not good at calling things like on the spot. You yeah, know, it's one thing to sit there in the stands and oh that ref missed the call, but then when you're actually that that official. Yeah, dude. And it's hard. And you don't you want you don't want to be a, a Nazi quick. official too. Like you yeah, don't want you don't want to look. call every little thing. You know, you want to let them play some. But yeah. Kelly, um, Kelly, how are our levels right now? Are we good? Are we are we looking good? Cam, lean am up I too far? I would say lean up on the mic okay. a little bit. Yeah. Um, so Episode I, one, everyone. I guess uh, my favorite sports moment would probably be 2014. Um, so l- let me give a, a little backstory for those who aren't as familiar with the NBA as me. But can I can um, I guess what this is? Yeah. Okay. So 2014, Spurs beat the Spurs beat the Heat, didn't they? Yeah, okay. They did. Okay. So in 2013, um, the Spurs had the chance to to cl- to close the finals against Miami with LeBron mm-hmm. and Chris Bosh. Like th- that team was amazing, and uh, they even had Joint and Wade at the time still. And uh, you know the Spurs. They, they put up a good fight. They even had the lead in the series. Yeah. And then they, they blew it on game six when Ray Allen drains a three. And then game seven, we lost. And then we come back a year later, and we beat them. And so that, that was, like, satisfying for me, you know? They still – and and that was Miami at peak, too, because they had oh, yeah, LeBron. They, yeah, they had everyone, dude. Yeah. They, they were – they had the, the three best – or considerably the three best players in the league at the time. You, you can make an argument for that. 
at the time. Well, okay. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people would say that it's like the similar to the ninety something Bulls, the, the Bulls yeah. you know, with Scottie Pippen and oh yeah, and Jordan yeah. and, and uh, Steve Kerr. Yeah. Love Steve. Kerr. Yeah. For those of you, if you guys haven't watched The Last Dance on Netflix, it's on Netflix now. It's pretty good. It's pretty good watch. It's a good watch. Um, so yeah, man. I you know. I was thinking about that question too, and I thought back, and I was like, "Yeah, Cameron's gonna say when when the Spurs beat the Heat." Yep. And I was thinking back because I remember where I was in 2014. I was, was at like a pool party with my friends. When they won. Yeah, when they won because I remember I watched it because I really liked y'all's point guard and, that, and he was Tony bald. Parker. He had the little bald yep. head. Oh, oh wait, no, you're talking about uh, the shooting guard, Manu. Yeah, shooting guard. Yeah. Yeah, Manu. That dude, he looked like a 35 year old tax accountant, but boy, <laughs> could he ball, man. You should have seen him back in the day when he had a full head of hair. That dude was. Was it luscious? Yeah, yeah he, was, <laughs> he was an insane player too. The way he navigated in the paint. Yeah. He would. Like, it didn't matter if somebody had a had a big height advantage on him or size advantage in general, he would find a way around him. Gotcha. So, okay. So like you've, you've mostly, you've mostly focused on basketball. So like people like me who kind of have, you know, a hand dipped in every, in every honey pot or maybe a little bit more in, in the football. And for the people that don't really watch sports at all, you know, why do you love basketball more than anything else? Or why do you love sports in general? Uh, let's see. When I was a, a little kid, I guess I I saw the Spurs playing, and I don't I couldn't tell you who they were playing, you know, but I was just like captured by that game. Yeah. And uh, you know, within the next week or two, I started talking all the time about wanting to play basketball. So of course, you know, my parents were like, "All right, well, we'll let you go play basketball at the YMCA," and then started playing there and just kind of kept playing. Yeah. And then I, I didn't quit until I was about 16, 17. And then at that point, I transitioned from like, okay, I love playing the game to I love watching the game. And that, that was really like a, a big shift for me. Cause, it's a big transition. Yeah, because as a kid, you know, you're sitting there and you're like, I, I just want to play basketball. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's fun. It's a fun sport. But as I got older and realized my uh, physical abilities were – we're not gonna we're allow there. allow me to continue to play basketball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I realized like I can still enjoy this game, and that's when I actually tried to do uh, officiating. And once again, <laughs> that was terrible. I was <laughs> I was not good. Like Cameron I've, as an I've official, never had, I would love to see it. I've never had so many seventh grade girls' parents yelling at me at one time. How bad was it? It was terrible. What did they say? I, I don't remember. All I remember is the coach actually got in my face. I'm like, dude, these girls are like, they're, they're teenagers. Why, why does this game even matter? It's you all about know? the heart, Cameron. I guess, but but still, like, getting mad at me because I didn't make a foul call that you wanted and just sitting there, I, I, it wasn't for me. You give, you I, give I don't respect have, to the I don't officials have thick after enough that. Skin. Oh, for sure. And, and I criticize them, too, a lot more now because I'll – you know, I, I had to learn and memorize all yeah. the rules. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. we had, like, four different rule books we had to go through. It was, like, for different aspects of the game, you know. Mm-hmm. And it was it was a lot of information to take in. But um, I'm really glad, like, I at least attempted to do that. You know, I spent way too much money on the referee the, equipment the to, to use it one time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, – I, I did learn a lot, like in that process, and I, I definitely appreciate and criticize the game. I mean, it gives you doing different things because you can say, like, someone who's just watched basketball their whole life, they can they can't really say much other than what they see. But there's a transition from people like us who have played sports, and then we switched from just from playing it and realizing that you know we're not necessarily the best you know, athletes you know what i mean yeah. like <laughs> yeah, for sure and then and then you switch into just being a fan of the game and i think that is sport like fandom at its purest form you know what i mean yeah. and then there's people like me who have never really given up and and still want to be involved but you know i'm, I'm not, obviously not going to go out there and and, and guard Devonte adams <laughs> even though i probably could just kidding. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> but um, you know, and that just goes from like broadcasting to doing these podcasts or to you know doing the graphic design stuff. There's just like, I feel like there's just kind of this need as far as how much you love the sport or just kind of what it is, and and, and that like drive to just stay involved. Right. You know? and that, and I think that's a big thing is like staying involved with the sport mm-hmm. like that because if if you're not watching 
you know, your favorite team every time they play, then you're not really going to care when they do or don't make the playoffs. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like that. You, you get committed to this team or, or, or you just like a player because, you know, all those uh, LeBron fans, they don't care who he's playing for. If, like they followed him from Cleveland to Miami, back to Cleveland. No, I want you, I want you to hold on to that LeBron thing for a second. Okay. We're going to loop back around to LeBron. <laughs> all right. I wanted to transition here. I want, <laughs> I'll, I'll go first if you want me to. But your most embarrassing – because you played. Yeah. Your most embarrassing oh, I, I moment already, uh, playing basketball. Let okay. me hear it. All right. So um, my last year playing, I was not at the level I needed to be. That's, that's a very nice way of – Saying I as sucked. In, as in height or as in just um, it, overall skill? It, it was a combination. I mean, I was five foot four. Okay. Play, were you and play varsity? I, uh, JV, but okay. it was a 6A school. Oh, jeez. So, <laughs> ah, so the, the JV team, like, practiced with varsity and because, you know, those are the future varsity players. Yeah. And it was just – um, I wasn't fast enough. I wasn't tall enough. I, I Like, the athleticism really killed me. I had I felt like I had a good game IQ. Like, I know – I was good at running the plays and doing everything right, but it was like when I got on the court, I, I didn't always make the best decision, you know? Yeah. Like maybe skipping a pass or something, and, and it resulted in a turnover. So one game, I, uh, we're, we're playing uh, uh, Colleen Ellison, and it was my coach's old school Colleen. that he coached for. Yeah. It, it was his old school that yeah, he was yeah, the yeah. JV coach yeah, yeah. for, and he came over to our school, and um, he, he really wanted to win that game. Like he made it, he made it clear that this is not a game that we lose this season. So uh, I don't go into the game until the third quarter. That that's that's where my uh, position was on, on that team. <laughs> I was I, I was like practice squad, borderline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like you know, I get a few minutes here and there. Fighting for every game. Yeah, and um, and I definitely didn't like help make me want to pursue it any further. You know, of course. Uh, that's, but but uh, the moment was when we were playing them, uh, I, I got in the game. We had the ball. We went down. I turned the ball over. But I beat everyone back to the other end of the court, so I'm defending. Well, there's, a, there's this guy running at me. And, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely got a good bit of size on me. Yeah. And he's, it looks like he's about to go up for the dunk, right? Well, my coach – or all of my coaches, the varsity coach, uh, even my freshman, JV, they all – pressed how important it was to take charges mm -hmm. it's like that's a big momentum shifter and everyone in the nba knows that when you get a, a charge call instead of a blocking call in a game that is a big deal for your team yeah and uh guy comes up i think he's gonna dunk he ends up just rolling it off i take his nuts to my face <laughs> in the game <laughs> just posterize just, just in terrible. front of your friends and like, family he, he jumps so high that i'm because i'm only five foot four yeah, yeah, yeah. he jumps so high his nuts just and I not I, I fell back, and I was just dazed. I, I I get up. We got the charge call. Okay. I'm all excited. I'm like, all right, I did something good in this game. I get pulled out of the game before the next play even starts. Did you at least get a good job? Huh? Did you at least get yeah, a good I got, job? I got I got a high five when I walked out, and I was like, all right, I I guess I did my role. I I got us the ball for one extra possession. We <laughs> lost. We, to the we face. lost that game. <laughs> All for so, nothing. Yeah, all for nothing. T took nuts up to the face. Got no respect. No, uh, no extra playing. No recognition. Time, no, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> just, just took it, and that that was how it went. And That's a sport, though, man. That's just the sport I, yeah, for the most I part. I remember mine. Um, I played basketball for one year. That was in eighth grade, and I made the A team. Don't know how. I was just, I was like, I was a pretty good football player at the time, and uh, I think. Track was after basketball. Did, was it a, a football coach yeah. coaching basketball? Yeah. It, well, it was a it was a football coach that got me to play basketball. Oh, okay. And he was like, just you know, come on, Craig, just you know, just do it, just for the experience. I'm in eighth grade, so you know, whatever, I'll just do it, do it anyways, because you want the coach to like you. Um, so I did it, and I somehow made the A team. I don't know how. I did like I had no knowledge of the game. Like I didn't know the positions. I didn't know what fat like the fouls were. I think maybe just athletically, they just put me on the A team, right? So the first game, coach goes, Craig, Damiano, get in. So I get in, right? Don't know where I am. Like, I'm just like, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just standing in the middle of the court. <laughs> Everything is happening, right? And then uh, my buddy Parker, he looks at me. He's the point guard. And then he starts directing me around, right? 
and then we take it from uh, from the base, and you got to go to the full court. He passes me the ball, but they're doing a full court press at the time. So I was super overwhelmed because no one told me what that was in practice. So I take the ball, and I fucking... <laughs> I go and I look at the basket and I go up to shoot it and my and my friend Trevor the center stuffs me. My own teammate stuffs me. You shot at the wrong but basket. Shot at the wrong ball. <laughs> I shot at the wrong basket. And the stuff oh. was so bad, bro. It came back and it hit me square in the face. <laughs> And the ball just went everywhere, and then you just hear this is the this is the first. Oh. I'm gonna give you two. This is the first one, and then you just hear the crowd go ooh. And then I see, and then it doesn't help because I looked over at my mom. My mom's laughing her ass off at the time. She's just laughing at me. No support, just laughs. <laughs> and the second time, this is the next game. I look. We were at the base again, and I look at my buddy Parker. I said, "You got?" It. I, was, I was like, "Do you want like he's gonna pass it to me?" I said, "Do you need me here?" He goes, "No." So I start running. There's no one. There's no one pressing him. So I'm running to like my, my position on the arc, and he goes, Craig. And I look back, and the ball just <laughs> domes me. Like, as hard, like, I get hit in the face <laughs> twice. Just domes me as hard as he can. And like blood started coming out of my nose. And I was like, and I was like eighth grade me, I'm like, why? Like, why did you do that? And he was like, I needed you. I, I said, you said no. <laughs> and then as soon as I got hit, it was an even worse ooh. From and this the, was all in one game? No, this is two games. This is oh, two okay, consecutive. Okay. So this I had two terrible games, okay? Terrible games. This is the only, that was the last year I played basketball, my guy. Yeah, I, I can see why. I did, I did that whole season. I scored two points though, because I was friends. With my buddy Gabe, he was in, the, he was in there for the same reason, and uh, I don't know what. I just lobbed it up. It was like the last game of the season. I just lobbed it up to try to get a point, and everyone knew I was like I sucked, and I and it went in. <laughs> I got two points, and the, the and the and the fans just went berserk, bro. <laughs> they were so happy for me. <laughs> That this that this like five four kid just <laughs> scored two points. There's only two points in the whole season. And uh, my buddy Gabe, uh, uh, like his parents and my and my mom, they would always hang out because we were the two that sucked. And like and like my mom was Hispanic and he was Hispanic too. So like they would like talk like in Spanish with each other and stuff. And uh, after the game, his dad comes up to me, and he goes, "Mira, Craig, mira, aquí, best two points ever." <laughs> <laughs> it made me feel so good, bro. I had goosies. I had goosies. I'm goosies now thinking about it. At least you had the the fan support. I had the fan support, man. What about you though? What was the best? What was the best one you had? Um, I don't know. I feel like my my best chance got stolen from me. Cause, what did you uh, say that? We were playing Ellison again, but we weren't at our stadium. We were at their stadium this time, and uh, same coach, same season as as what I was talking about before. But um. We have five seconds left to go. We're down by two points, and uh, I get thrown into the game. And I'm not supposed to be in. Like, I'm not a starter. I'm not supposed to be in the game when there's five seconds left, and yeah. and it's a one possession game. Um, and coach draws up this game plan. Hey, get Cameron the ball so that way he can draw the foul because everyone's bigger than him. Let let him draw the foul. Get to the free throw line because he should, he hasn't missed a free throw all season. And let's let him do that and get us into overtime. So that that was the game plan. Mm -hmm. Well, our point guard gets the ball. He's supposed to pass it to me. I got a guy right on me. I shake the guy. Don't get the ball. The point guard. He, he's my friend, but RJ he just dribbles up the court and then he shoots a shot from outside, misses it, and we lose the game. Oh. I just felt like that was that was my one oh, chance to Cameron. to actually make an impact on the team that that could have resulted or you know could have given us a win, but it's that pain. that sucked. Um, but I, I guess uh, my best moment would be like when I was when I was a kid playing at the Woodway Family Center, and uh, I guess I was about ten years old, and I just it, it was the championship, and I just had a great game. And, like there wasn't a single moment; it was just that game as a whole. Just drop was, thirty was triple double. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I dropped thirty, but ten year old but, triple double. You know, I I def I definitely was leading our team in points. Yeah. They don't they don't keep stats that way at you know the ten year old level. But <laughs> what, is, what is it called? Little dribblers? I'm pretty sure. Little dribblers? Yeah, I think I, that's I, I think that. that's what it's called. Um, I'll tell you though, uh, going from that Woodway Family Center, which was just like you know uh, a lot of families, and it was just kids playing sports for fun, like they did basketball, football, baseball, they they did it, all of that. And then uh, I I went to the AAU leagues. What is that? 
Um, it is it is competitive, like independent team basketball for youth. So it's like anyone ages the the gr- age group I was in was thirteen to seventeen. Yeah, and it was like you you went and played for a state championship, and I won a state championship. Did Which, you really? Yeah. Do you get? Yeah, do you have the AAU, trophy for it? I, I've got a medal. I got a gold medal for it. That's nice. And uh, and guess, guess how? Guess how many minutes I played in that game? How many? Zero. Oh my god! But <laughs> I did. I did play most of the game uh, for the semifinal. There you so go. so I helped us get there. Yeah. Um. But but no, that was that was a cool feeling too. Though was getting that medal. Yeah. Um. I was the only white kid on the team. It was that was a thing. So it's, it's pretty, uh, I, I mean, it's pretty I rare for anyone to get though, that championship. I think I was blocked like four times in that semi championship game, like stuffed. Yeah, it was just terrible. Like I was not at the level I needed to be. I wasn't. I wasn't athletic enough. I wasn't tall enough. I just. Yeah. I, I didn't have the abilities, and these are guys like trying to play college level. Yeah. Like that. That's what it was. Where, were guys who weren't getting what they the, the amount of exposure they wanted. Um, from their high school, so they go and play in these because they're they're scouts and all kinds. Yeah. of Yeah. Well, you got D one athletes yeah. in there too. Yeah. It's that's still a good accomplishment. Though. And actually, uh, a few of my teammates went on to play in college. Oh uh, yeah. Bubba Furlong ended up playing at Sam Houston State University for a few go. years. I think I think he may still be playing there. I can't remember. I ha- I haven't really kept up with him uh, mm-hmm. over the past couple of years, but I know that's where he started off. Um, also, Xavier Armstead. He was our point guard, and he. Uh, his grandfather was the coach of our AAU team that won the championship. Gotcha. But, <clears throat> but yeah, that that shift from playing, you know, like it, like kid basketball mm-hmm. or even middle school basketball, and going up to that, these guys are all trying to get a D one scholarship and stuff, and and yeah. I'm just sitting there playing for fun, like I'm just I'm just riding along on this team to the championship. Hey like, man, I mean, I had I a had my moments, a dub. but a rings yeah. a ring. But but it was definitely a cool experience getting to to go play in that state championship. Kelly, how much time are we at? Um, we're at 22. Oh, we're at twenty two. Oh, perfect. Okay. I was, I was like, I was enjoying this conversation, but I felt like we were at like forty yeah. minutes by now. <laughs> let's 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 uh let's move on to a uh, hot take. What's your hot take, Cameron? What, what do you mean? What's my hot take? Though? Like, what's your hot take? What do you, what do you think? What's your opinion on like something about basketball? That you think, like, like, I, okay. I think that the NBA Eastern Conference sucks. Okay, so this <laughs> the this is my problem the, with you, Cameron. No, okay. The, the you ninth can't. seed in the West, the Dallas Mavericks, have a 500 record right now. Okay, and they are in ninth place. They're 16 and 16. Yeah, they have a 500 record. We're 22 and, and 12. Yeah, the the Sixers. Yeah, no. What what, what, what argument are you making? Look at the sixth place team in the East. What is their record? 16 and and 17. Uh Uh-huh. They have more losses than wins. (laughs) And and they the sixth seed this season has an assured spot in the playoffs. They don't even have to do a play and they have a losing record. Are you kidding me? That is some garbage. Well, and, cool. and the West is over here. San Antonio is going off, to be honest. Like we moved up to fifth after our win last night against New Orleans. Seventeen but, and twelve. Yeah. I mean I mean we're looking good. But go and look. The the tenth place team is fourteen and fifteen. Okay, but you got okay, look, the ninth look, 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 is, is Yeah, but but look, okay, so I mean the Sixers are twenty two and twelve. Okay, I'm seeing your argument now. Because Utah you have, is twenty seven and have seven. Three and it, teams. Geez. You have three teams in the East that are good. Everyone else is just. We have three teams trash. that have a positive record. Yeah. You have. Well, I think you got more than no, no. You only have three with a positive. You have eight with a positive Ex- record. Exactly, and that that's the point. Okay, okay, but look I'm though, making. look. We've got Brooklyn. Which oh, no, Brooklyn, no, Brooklyn's probably gonna go to the finals. But yes, and that's that's the argument I'd make. They're gonna have to get over Milwaukee, which will be a challenge. And I mean, I don't think so. Uh, Chris Middleton's really stepped up. It's not just the honest show anymore this season. You yeah, know? I haven't heard much from him. Yeah, these because days. that's because he's filling his role a little more, or not filling his role. He's uh, he's finding a different role. How do you feel about him staying with Milwaukee and not going through the whole courting smart, process? Dude. I think I think it's a really good move on his part. That he's going to get the most money doing that because they can offer him a higher supermax than any other team. Yeah, well, but I mean, like, it's like a whole thing where where the courting process of going through like different NBA teams. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I mean, there are plenty of players who choose that route, but you also have like uh, a lot of those early two thousands guys. 
who just stuck with one team. Like Tim Duncan, he was looking at going to the uh, free agency following the 1999 season, I believe, like when we won the cha- our first championship for San Antonio. He, he wanted to leave. And Greg Popovich convinced him to stay, and then he stayed for like almost, uh, uh, over a decade, you know? Do you think LeBron's better than Jordan? Ooh. Um, I think it is very hard to compare players who are not playing against the same level of talent because I feel like now every team has superstars. There, there is not – like even the worst team in the NBA, the worst player on the worst team – would destroy any of us in basketball, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like they're at a different level now. And I feel like back in the day, just if you took the worst player in the NBA from the 90s and put him against the worst player today, I think the guy playing today would destroy him. Yeah, and, well, because, I mean, there's you know, and, there's just better training. Yeah, there's, there's better training. You have the G League development. Um, now they're even talking about removing the requirement of players having to go through college. Yeah. Well, and, and LeBron went straight out of high school. Yes, but then they changed it shortly after. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was one of the last ones. Um, but, you know, it, I think it's a good thing because the G League is, is focused on player development, whereas I feel like college is very short-term. Like, they're not looking at your – they know they only have you for a year or two because if you're a good player, you're not going to be in college for years. Yeah. You're playing one, maybe two. Look at Zion. Zion went and played one season at Duke. That's all he needed. And then he went to the NBA. Yeah, and that's all he needed. But it's like you're not getting a college education out of that. Yeah, you, but you I don't mean, have a degree. What, you're you, not, do you even need it if you're going to get no, paid millions no, exactly. of dollars right outside? So why make these kids have to go to school and keep them from making money doing what they're good at? Yeah, that is true. Like you, you should you be able to go. have players who come from like rougher backgrounds that – you know, the, they need some financial support and you go to college and there's all these new expenses that you didn't have to worry about before. Yeah. And, and that, you know, that's got to cause some, some discomfort or some issues for those players. Yeah. You Cause know. you can't take anything. Like you can't even take a free meal. Yeah. You can't, you can't even sell your autograph. Yeah. Like the NCAA needs to ease up. Yeah. And Cause I mean the, the fact that they're still not playing players and they're about to come back out with NCAA. I know. I I'm, think I was about to mention that. Cause I think that that's good for the players. That they're not getting paid? No, no, no. That they're bringing NCAA back because I think they're, that's going to open that door. You know, That's going to bring in that conversation. Well, y'all are making money off of us again by using our names yeah. in this video game. Yeah. So we would like to get compensated for it. I think it's just going to make that argument a little more valid. I mean, they need at least back. something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. But the – NBA just wants to remove it all together. They just want to get their players, like they want to go and find the high, best high school recruits. Yeah, go it, and go and get them on their G League team, develop them for three or four years. Yeah, throw them in the NBA and let them compete. Yeah, because I mean the NBA is global. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, oh yeah, they, I mean look at the diversity in the league. It's like, insane. I don't. There are countries I haven't even heard of <laughs> that have oh, players for sure. in the NBA. It's like you know. Uh, you, you got a lot of European players now. Oh yeah. Um, there's a there's a lot of guys coming in from Africa too. Uh, like uh, I think Embiid isn't he from Cameroon, from the mm. Sixers? Yeah, he is. Yeah, and I well, but, I, I, I and need then, to fact check uh, that. The Spurs, you know, we got uh, Patty Mills. He's uh, from Australia. Yep. Um, I mean, our big three they were all foreign players. Like Tim Duncan came from the uh, oh I forgot what the Virgin Islands. And, he did. Yeah. That's and he was a swimmer until he was eighteen. He wanted to be a professional swimmer, and then somebody was like, "Hey, you should play, should basketball. play basketball." And then he he ended up becoming arguably the best power forward of all time. That, I mean, that's my take on. It. I think he's better than Dirk. That's your hot take. Yeah. Uh, all right, Kelly's giving us a single. I wanna I wanna end this on a on a note. Why do you, why is how has sports just kind of impacted your life? And why do you, if you had to recommend it to anyone else, like people that don't really watch sports, you know, what, what, what do you have to say? I think that people who don't regularly watch sports need to go and watch a, a like professional level sports game, you know, go, why? go because the experience is unreal. Like watching a Spurs game on TV does not compare to going in soon in that stadium. Like when I when I watch Spurs games on television, like occasionally I'll like yell at the TV, but I'm like pretty calm. I'm I'm a calm sports person. Like when I'm watching, yeah, you know, you're not you're not me and the I, Eagles. I don't scream. I don't I don't yeah. get all like I may get pissed off, but I'm not gonna gonna rage at the TV about it. Yeah. But if you go into those 
that that arena and you're surrounded by you know thousands and thousands of people and every time they're going defense you're like oh defense yeah yeah, yeah. you know you it's just, an atmosphere you get it's an atmosphere it. thing yeah it's it's a, it's a whole different level than just watching the game on television it's just, i i think that if people would go and watch a nfl game or a nba game they'd They'd get in, intrigued in the sport. Yeah, just a way to start. Well, this was fun. I would like to keep keep this going, but for the sake of the mini series, we gotta we gotta pull off. Uh, Cameron Russell, everyone. He also has his own album out now. Yeah. Jamie's go, Guns. Go, go ahead check and out Jamie's Guns. Yeah. What's it called? What's the album called? Jamie's just Guns. Just Jamie's Guns. Self titled. I love it. Just like New York, New York. So good they had to name it twice. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you guys next week. Mm-hmm.